Okay, it is officially 11.15 and we have some introductions to get through. So if anyone's trickling in, they won't miss anything. So welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today for our Mars Rover Challenge Pro D-Day Workshop with Gearing Up. To begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional ancestor well, unsurrendered and stolen lands of the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, Squamish, Kikite, and Kwikwetlem Indigenous peoples, whose land I have the honor of living and teaching all of you from today. As an uninvited settler on this land, I'm grateful to be able to be on this land, learn from this land, and connect and grow on this land. I must also acknowledge that I bet benefit every single day from colonialism, while Indigenous peoples of what is today referred to as Burnaby have unwillingly made the ultimate sacrifice of their lives and homes. I'm open and welcoming of knowledge that allows me to continue my journey on this land in a way that is meaningful and respectful to both the land and its protectors. So I would like to invite all of you to take a moment to acknowledge the land that you're living on and the peoples who have lived here since time immemorial. And I want to spend some time as well introducing what we do here at Gearing Up, especially for those of us who are joining. Excuse our secondary instructor. She is a big mama's girl and she can't leave me alone. <laughs> We're joining us here for the first time. So UBC Gearing Up is a nonprofit outreach organization that is affiliated with the UBC Faculty of Applied Sciences. We are dedicated to promoting science, engineering, and technology to the youth and teachers of BC through fun, innovative, and hands-on pro day workshops, online learning, summer camps, weekend clubs, and so much more. And we also have two of our lovely people from gearing up with us today. I'll let our first instructor introduce themselves. Um, hello, I'm Daisy. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. I'm a student at UBC in the International Relations Program. And yeah, in the future, I want to be a financial analyst. But for now, I'm here at Lovely Gearing Up. Um, I'll pass it back to Marley now. Thank you, Daisy. So as you said, my name is Marley. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I graduated from SFU back in 2019 with Bachelor's of Science and Health Sciences and a minor in biology. I'm currently back at SFU and I'm a teacher candidate with the PDP program and I've been very much enjoying that so far. And therefore my dream job is a teacher, specifically elementary school teacher. Um, and I'm very much excited about that. And we would love to get to know a bit more about all of you. So please introduce yourselves in the chat. You can let us know what grade or grades that you teach and what you're looking forward to today um, from our workshop. So I'll give you a little bit of time to do that. So I know typing takes a few minutes. No, that takes a while. So I'll go over kind of like the nitty gritty things while everyone's typing so you can listen to it in the background. There we go. We have our first few coming in. Great. Yes, yeah, so we will be giving you all the links and I'm sure Daisy can go back onto the website. There's some download links um, down at the bottom, but any of the links that were there um, are going to be at the end of our presentation as well. So we will have all of those. And we wanna mention before we get into things that we love questions and please ask questions throughout the workshop. So you can raise your hand or type in the chat at any time. Someone will be watching the chat at all times. Um, or you, if you choose, you can save your questions for the end and ask them one-on-one, -on -one, whatever you desire. And while everyone's introducing themselves, thank you. I can see those popping up in the corner here. Okay, well, I've double checked the links. Thank you for pointing that out. I've double checked the links at the end of our slides and they all work. So if the ones on the conference page don't work, the links that we have do work. <laughs> so here are the big idea goals for what we're going to be accomplishing today. We wanna understand the basic structure of the engineering design cycle, use our inquiry-based learning to solve a new design problem, and to understand how to build a narrative around STEM activities to make them more engaging and personal for our students. Lovely to meet all of you, thank you. 
we're going to start off by taking a little bit of a step back and looking at what engineers are and why we want to encourage incorporating more engineering and STEM in our classrooms. So engineers take science, math, and technology and apply it to solve the world's problems, make improvements, and ultimately help people. Engineering is more than just math and science. It's using those skills to make the world a better place. And the engineering activities we'll be doing today are really fun, but there's a bigger goal in mind with introducing students early on to engineering in order to break down any misconceptions that engineering is only suitable for a select few. Our goal is to increase the diversity and inclusion in engineering and STEM fields by fostering students' passions throughout their school experience and encouraging them to consider engineering as a possible path for them. We want students to know that anyone can be a scientist or an engineer or anything else that they want. And I just want to note that here on the slide, we specifically address women as being an underrepresented underrepresented demographic in engineering. However, this isn't to say that there aren't other marginalized groups underrepresented in engineering. And before we get into our main activity today, we wanted to give you a brief overview of the guiding principles that engineers use in their day-to-day -day lives in order to develop the best products for their clients. And we're going to be using that today as well. And this is called the engineering design process, or it's also known as the engineering design cycle because it's generally depicted in a circular fashion. And this is a framework that engineers use to solve problems in the most time efficient and cost effective way. There are many different depictions of the engineering design process, but they are all similar in the steps that they follow. So we usually start, begin our time in the ask step where we are looking at what problems we're trying to solve our potential clients, as well as any limitations we might have on our budget or the types of materials we're going to use. So this is where if we're trying to be more sustainable, we really have to think about those, the budget and our materials. Next, during the research step, we want to see if anyone has already created something similar, as well as if there's any experts in the field that we can look to for inspiration. We don't wanna reinvent the wheel here. Next, we want to brainstorm a large quantity and variety of ideas without narrowing down. So it's just trying to get all your thoughts out there. And then in the plan stage, we kind of start to narrow down our ideas by reflecting back on our problem, making sure we're actually addressing it. And we're trying to solve any, uh, as well as any of our predetermined limitations. Maybe something will completely blow our budget so that idea is no longer feasible. And once we move to the create step, we're going to be asking what type of prototype we need to create. And this is mainly dependent on the clients we're designing for. So this prototype may look like a scale model or a computer simulation or anything else. And now that we've created our prototype, we're going to need to test it. And this can look like many different things. It can look like running an experiment, running a computer simulation, or allowing our clients to actually try out the prototype. And this is a great opportunity to gather a lot of information that can allow us to create the best final product possible. And once we've collected all of our information and our feedback, we can improve our design based on that. And this is where we might need to go back to some of our other steps and not necessarily just the create and the test stages. Sometimes we have to go all the way back to the beginning and maybe address a different problem. And that's what's really great about the engineering design process is you can go back and fix things. And this is another great way of looking at the engineering design process. Also shows you that the solution isn't quite perfect, you can kind of go back to these three middle steps here. And this is a really important part that we want to emphasize and introduce to our students. Let them know that it's okay to keep going back and changing your original ideas in order to improve them. You do not have to get perfect, a perfect result on the first try. And as you'll hear about in just a bit, the experts don't do that either. These slides, here he is, someone is ahead of this. These slides, the write-ups and everything will be available in a link that we're going to be providing to you later, as long as some extra goodies as well. So don't worry if you see something really important or if there's a link on here that you've missed, you will be able to get access to it later. Thank you for the question. And here's another one. I really like this depiction of it because it's a little bit less linear and 
The key elements of iterate is also attached to multiple years. So they kind of all work together and they demonstrate going back and improving. So why is this important for both teachers and students? Almost always doing engineering design challenges using the engineering design process allows us as educators to cover multiple core competencies as well as other subjects such as science, business, and even art. Engineering is all about teamwork, communicating thoughts and ideas, and developing critical skills that can extend throughout a student's entire education. And another reason that engineering design challenges are great resources to bring into our classroom is that engineering design process and the ADST, ADST steps that I've laid out right here are almost identical. In fact, they line up quite nicely. This is why engineering activities work so well in classroom settings as it allows you to accomplish a lot of goals all at once. And now I know I've done a lot of talking today, so I wanna pass the torch off to you. We're gonna start off our discussions today. We're going to be splitting you up into breakout groups for a few minutes to discuss maybe what part of your curriculum, a particular science or math module or a project that you have in mind, you think could benefit from applying the engineering design process as well as how. So you will have three minutes to discuss amongst yourselves before we move on to our main activity. We're also gonna be as Daisy so on top of it and making my job so much easier. <laughs> we have the question in the chat so that you can still see it when you're in your groups. And we're gonna come back in three minutes. Does anyone have any questions before you go? Don't think so. If you do, you can call us into the breakout room and we can help out. We will see you in three minutes. Perfect. Welcome back, everyone. We're slowly coming back. It's always lovely to see the faces and the transition back from the breakout groups. I'm like, aha, I see you. You can hide forever. <laughs> okay. Now that we all have our minds on the right track, we've got our engineering brains turned on, our, we're going to introduce our design challenge for today, which is going to incorporate all those aspects that we've discussed so far. So we're going to be guiding you through the engineering design cycle using our problem solving skills and our inquiry based on learning to solve the challenge. So to give a little bit of some background stories, the Mars rovers are motor vehicles that travel across the surface of the planet Mars upon arrival. They have several advantages over stationary landers as they, they can examine more territory, they can be directed towards interesting features, and then can place themselves in sunny positions to weather wintering months. And they can advance the knowledge of how to perform very remote robotic vehicle control. So hopefully we can do this on other planets. I have a question for all of you. And this kind of, I kind of alluded to this earlier. Do you think that engineers working on the Mars rover missions, there's been a lot of them, were able to accomplish their objective on the first try? Or maybe what sorts of things might've gone wrong? Do you think they failed while working on the project? And how do you think they dealt with this? So we can start, do you think they've made mistakes? Big mistakes. What do you think? Yes or no? I see some big nods. Yes, absolutely for sure. And I have some facts here to share with you. So the first ever successful Mars mission was in 1964, NASA's Mariner 4. That was after six failed missions. They finally got it on the seventh try. And in 2003, the European Space Agency's Beagle 2 that deployed from Mars Express, they were successful at landing, but two of their solar panels failed to deploy and that they weren't actually able to communicate with their Mars rover. Oh, I, okay, I'm, I'm saving that for later, the first attempt at learning. That's my favorite. Okay, I'm saving that in my teacher brain. I love it very much. Amazing. So as we said earlier in this workshop, a great place to start with researching is looking at the experts in the field, such as the Jet Propulsion Lab at NASA. So we're going to watch a short video to get some inspiration. You're going to hear from some of the scientists that have worked on it, as well as see 
in action what it takes to land a Mars rover on the planet. So let me just get my screen all ready. Perfect. Closed caption is on. Here we go. When people look at it, uh, it looks crazy. That's a very natural thing. Sometimes when we look at it, it looks crazy. It is the result of reasoned engineering thought. But it still looks crazy. From the top of the atmosphere, down to the surface, it takes us seven minutes. It takes 14 minutes or so for the signal from the spacecraft to make it to Earth. That's how far Mars is away from us. So when we first get word that we've touched the top of the atmosphere, the vehicle has been alive and dead on the surface for at least seven minutes. Entry, descent, and landing, also known as EDL, is referred to as the seven minutes of terror because we've got literally seven minutes to get from the top of the atmosphere to the surface of Mars, going from 13,000 miles an hour to zero in perfect sequence, perfect choreography, perfect timing, and the computer has to do it all by itself with no help from the ground. It, if any one thing doesn't work just right, it's game over. We slam into the atmosphere and develop so much aerodynamic drag. Our heat shield, it heats up and it glows like the surface of the sun. 1600 degrees. During entry, the vehicle is not only slowing down violently through the atmosphere, but also we are guiding it like an airplane to be able to land in a very narrow, constrained space. This is one of the biggest challenges that we're facing and one that we have never attempted on Mars. Mars is actually really hard to slow down because it has just enough atmosphere that you have to deal with it. Otherwise, it will destroy your spacecraft. On the other hand, it doesn't have enough atmosphere to finish the job. We're still going about 1,000 miles an hour. So at that point, we use a parachute. The parachute is the largest and strongest supersonic parachute that we've ever built to date. It has to be able to withstand 65,000 pounds of force, even though the parachute itself only weighs about 100 pounds. When it opens up that fast, it's a neck snapping nine Gs. At that point, we have to get that heat shield off. It's like a big lens cap blocking our view of the ground to the radar. The radar has to take just the right altitude and velocity measurements at just the right time, or the rest of the landing sequence won't work. This big, huge parachute that we've got, it'll only slow us down to about 200 miles an hour. And that's not slow enough to land. So we have no choice, but we've got to cut it off and then come down in rockets. Once we turn those rocket motors on, if we don't do something, we're just gonna smack right back into the parachute. So the first thing we do is make this really radical divert maneuver. Fly off to the side. Diverting away from the parachute, killing our horizontal velocity and our vertical velocity, getting the rover moving straight up and down so it can look at the surface with its radar and see where we're going to land. And we head straight down to the bottom of a crater, right beside a six kilometer high mountain. We can't get those rocket engines too close to the ground, because if we were to descend propulsively with our engines all the way to the ground, we would essentially create this massive dust cloud. That dust cloud could then go and land on the rover. It could damage mechanisms and it could damage instruments. So the way we solve that problem is by using the sky crane. 20 meters above the surface, we have to lower the rover below us on a tether that's 21 feet long and then gently deposit it on its wings, on the surface. As the rover touches down and is now on the ground, the descent stage 
It's in a collision course with a rope. We must cut the bridle immediately and fly to the same stage to a safe distance from the rope. Okay, now that we have some incredible inspiration, it is time for us to do the fun stuff. Oh, it always wants to play one more time. So it's our time to start doing some designing. So I'm sure most of you are familiar with the classic egg drop challenge. You go on top of the roof and you drop off. This brings in some new elements to that experiment. It makes it a little bit more fun in my personal opinion. So our challenge for you today is to design and build a little bit a prototype of a Mars rover using any of the materials that you can find around you or those in your recycling bin. So we're challenging you with that a little bit. Because of our time constraints today, you can choose to design a whole Mars rover or you can choose just a component of one. And we're going to be giving you some more details, so don't worry. And what's great about this type of activity and engineering design challenges in general is that depending on the age of your students, they can work through it pretty independently. You can use a worksheet like this one that you're going to have available after today's workshop as well. And then for today's design challenge, we're going to roughly be walking you through some of these steps as well. And the whole worksheet looks a little something like this. And to come up with the designs for our Mars rover, we're going to be doing something called a design sprint. And so all you need for this is a piece of paper and a writing utensil. So make sure you grab that right now. And the first thing you need to do is take your piece of paper and fold it into four equal sections. So you can fold it hot dog and hamburger. Another um, method that people use for this one is called crazy eights, where they would put it, their paper into eight sections, but we're only going to do four for today. And you can give us a physical or a virtual thumbs up once your paper is nice and folded. Okay, I'm seeing a couple thumbs up. We'll give it a little bit more time. Just make sure everyone's good to go. Good, awesome. Thanks for letting me know in the chat. Okay, and while we're still finished folding, I'll give a few more instructions. We're going to be sketching, brainstorming, ideating in four one minute intervals. So these may seem very short, but this allows us to focus on our task at hand and prevent us from trying to be perfect and getting stuck in our heads. This works great for some students, but it, some might want a bit more time or some more guidance. So we highly recommend giving students more specific prompts for each design or adjusting the time intervals to be inclusive for all of our learners. And the good goal of this design sprint today is to come up with four different designs for either the entire Mars rover or just a component of one. Does anyone have any questions right now? I'm going to I'm going to be putting up timers and stuff like that. Don't worry. Perfect. So get ready. We're going to start with our first one. Let me just open it up. Okay, we're going to start with our first design. Square number one in three, two, one, go. We have about 23 more seconds left for our first design. And first design should be complete in three, two, one. Okay. We're going to be moving on to our second design. So try and change up maybe something from your previous one. And we're gonna start that in three, two, one, 
go. Second design. Halfway through our second design. So we folded, uh, for those of us who had some questions, we folded our piece of paper into four different sections. And we are just going through, we're trying to rapid fire some designs for either an entire Mars rover. Maybe you can make it a bit better than the one you saw in the video, or just a component of one, something that you can add on to NASA's already existing design that would make it better. And we're just going through really quickly very brief drawings or taking some notes. Does that clarify things a bit more? Or move on to our third one. So let me know, because we're gonna start our third design in three, two, one, go. Don't worry, we're gonna be talking in groups as well later, so you can get some inspiration from other people as well. Okay, we're halfway through our third design. I can make a design quickly here as well. So remember, we split off our page into four. We saw our Mars rover. We saw the video. Maybe you thought, okay, maybe if I change the shape of the parachute, or if I added maybe on some springs at the bottom, that's kind of what we're looking for. Does that, is that kind of more of an example that we're Curious about, there we go. We have some people holding up some examples for some inspiration. So it's just a quick, tiny little drawing there. Does that help us out a little bit? Thank you for helping. And we have time for our last design. So you can put in all your fun ideas all into one for this last one. Okay, we're gonna start it in three, two, one, go ahead. Okay, we have about 10 more seconds for our last design and don't worry, we're going to have some time to talk with other group members so we can get some inspiration before we build some things. Okay, and that's the last little bit of that part of the design sprint. I'm going to have to click, click through quite a few slides here. Okay. So we're going to be splitting you up into some breakout groups for a few minutes. So if you felt that you were a little bit unsure about your designs, you weren't quite sure what you were doing. And Daisy has posted the question that we're going to be talking about as well. This is your opportunity to discuss some of your designs, look at some other people's 
and see how we can improve on them, get some inspiration from everyone. So we encourage all members in the breakout group to provide some feed forward for each other so that we can combine all of our amazing ideas to make a really great product. Okay, does anyone have any questions about this next part? Trying to look to make sure. Yeah, everyone's okay. Again, you can call us into the breakout group if you need us. We're going to give you three minutes th for this, and then we're going to come back and we're going to start doing some building. There you go. I know I had to cut that conversation short a little bit because I want to make sure we give some time for you to kind of create a final design here. So we're going to adapt our prototyping stage here because I know we want to make sure we have time to provide you with the resources at the end. So your, our prototyping might look a little bit different. You might have the opportunity to kind of put something together quickly. Maybe it's a little small part of one of the designs you created, or you want to create a larger, more detailed sketch with some more labels, and it's a bit more to look at for our design prototyping stage. So pick your favorite design from before, incorporate some of that feed forward from our the rest of the participants here today, and we're going to give you about five-ish minutes for this part. So don't worry if you don't have something that's like 3D physical to hold up, that is okay. There's still a lot of information to gain from these very detailed drawings that we have here, okay? So I'm going to start and set my five minute timer. Feel free to turn off your cameras and kind of build in peace or look at your final designs and we'll come back in five minutes. And we'll be here if you have any questions. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second here. That way, if you would like to, if you're comfortable, you can hold up some of the drawings that you've done. Maybe you've come up with something that you're very proud of. So if we can hold it up to our screens, if you're comfortable sharing, that way we can get some inspiration from everyone. I know we didn't have very much time today. Normally this would happen over the course of a day, a few time periods throughout the week. So if you have some things to share, this is your opportunity to before we, oh, someone built something. <laughs> Good job. I'm actually very proud. That's like everyone else is amazed. Good job. Round of applause. That was probably like the quickest prototyping you've ever done, right? <laughs> That's right. It was. Yes. So, yes. So I'm trying to have sturdy, um, sturdy uh, landing gear. And mm -hmm. then here's the camera here. I can't, you probably can't see with the shade and with the the sun here, but there's a, this is the camera and I've drawn on the camera that it's got a camera face. And then the idea was to have an arm coming out as well, but didn't quite get, get there. And that is okay. You saw the amazement on all of our faces that you actually had time to build something. And we're so proud. Thank you for sharing. Is there anyone else who wants to hold something up quickly? I don't want to skip over anyone. It can be a drawing as well. Okay, okay, and I will go through. We have some resources quickly before you leave. There's going to be a few things being posted in the chat. Make sure you save those, open up in a different tab so that you're gonna have access to them later. For you as teachers, we have some events coming up very soon. We have our Coding Climate Change Virtual Pro D Day Workshop, as well as Creative Artificial Intelligence, both coming up in November. You're going to be able to see that on the website, which is linked right there. Daisy's so amazing. For your students, we have some incredible things coming up, mostly for high school students. We have our Technology Today, our high school engineering design competition, as well as innovative engineering coming up in the new year. Again, all, you can find that all on our website. We have some asynchronous online and self-guided courses available on edX. So if you want to further your learning in engineering and coding, these are some amazing resources all the way from kindergarten to grade nine. So those are online courses. That's the link that was just posted. Those of you who are asking about resources, 
you're going to get access to something called our STEM Ed Resources Hub. So if you participate in any of our Pro D Day events, including today, you get access to the slides and lesson plans from today and all of our previous Pro D Day events to kind of create a bank of resources and activities for you to draw upon when you want to do some more engineering in your classrooms. And that's the link right there. You so desire you can follow us on Instagram at g.educators to get some updates of things coming up soon. We have a very short, quick pro D feedback form. If you could fill that out, that helps us out a lot for future events, what you're looking for in future events, and what we can change about our current events. I know we ran out of time today, but that is okay. And final thank you to everyone. Thank you for joining us. I know. I wish we could spend all day together building all amazing things, but all your effort was incredibly appreciated. And I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. Thank you so much to everyone for joining us.